All right, everyone. Uh, this is going to be episode four of the Let's Make a Game series. Last week, uh, we started with Breakout. And we can show you where we got on that. We didn't get very far with it. We were working on a menu system uh, right here and a proper scene manager and um, event manager and that kind of stuff. So we were really doing the groundwork for a more advanced game. Um, not necessarily necessary for creating a game like uh, Breakout. But as we progress forward, we're going to be using some of that same code in other games. So, we're going to come to episode 4. You've been waiting for an hour, J-Man? Sorry, man. Alright. So, episode 4, we're going to get started. We're going to look through what we've done. So, I can just give you guys a quick update. So, last, last week, we started with a proper modularization of our objects. We have a couple different th uh, things going on. So first is our GUI. <clears throat> this is where we are handling all of our events. Uh, you know, up, down, left, right, enter, escape, um, quit events, all of that sort of thing. We're, having, we're binding them. So they're all handled right here when this is called update. So we don't have to handle this in our main loop. We also started creating GUI elements, for instance, the menu that you just saw, which is uh, a UI group, we're calling it. And um, the UI group can add elements to it. You can get an element by name. You can set focus. Basically trying to make it rather simple, kind of like HTML-ish. Not really HTML, but sort of like that. Go next, go previous, update, and render. And then we have our UI elements, for instance, when we actually run the game, you know, the start game is a UI element, difficulty easy is a UI element, quit is a UI element, for instance. And these have a group, which is, you know, this group up here. They have a name, they have whether they're focused or not, whether they're visible, and if they have a callback when they're activated. We're making breakout right now, Jamin. Breakout. <clears throat> and then they, they you have a set focus, handle events, blah, blah, blah. All this sort of stuff right now. Uh, text select is a type of UI element, which we have for our menu. And that is the GUI right now. Pretty simple. Our main loop is run in here. It imports the scene and imports Pygame. It initializes Pygame. It uh, sets the display to an 800 by 600 window. Uh, we set up a clock to handle our FPS. And then we have our scene manager. And we have a, our menu is a scene. And we're activating the menu scene. And then we're basically we're telling the scene manager to update and then render. And then we're flipping the display. Pretty simple. Uh, if we look at our scenes, here. We have a scene manager which can hold a collection of scenes. Uh, breakout is, um, here if I show you real quick, uh, in case you don't know, uh, someone in my chat's asking here. Breakout is, you know, video game. Kind of like this. Each of these are um, blocks. There's just no lines showing you. So when you have a, it's kind of like Pong, where you're breaking shit. So you have a paddle at the bottom, and you have a ball. The ball will hit a block and break the block, and then bounce back down. And you want to hit the back up, more or less, um, and break all of the objects. So we're doing something simple-ish like that. So anyway, a scene manager uh, has several scenes in it. It allows us to move from scene to scene seamlessly. This will allow us to have a end game scene, has a menu scene, we'll have um, a high score scene, I believe, eventually, um, and things like that. Um, uh, an actual scene object has a couple of different functions here. Quit handles stopping the loop so that the game ends. Um, Setup is called after initialization, so whenever we have a scene, 
No, I'm not talking to two chats, J-Man. Just you. Um, so basically what happens is there's some stuff that's initialized here in the scene, right? It always has an event handler, it always has a scene manager, etc, etc, etc. So it's going to update, and it's going to call setup. So when we define the setup function in these scenes, that's happening after the other initialization. That way we don't have to redo all of that. <clears throat> Activate, which is when that scene will start, what it, what it needs to fire. Um, do render uh, basically calls our render. Um, render will be overridden by each scene, so do render is used by the scene manager to force that. <clears throat> do update uh, both pumps the event handler update and then calls self.update, so we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Alright, thanks. And then we have our render and update functions. So for instance, the main menu <clears throat> has several different, has a UI group and several different things. The level uh, that will be playing, the game level starts on the tutorial. And until we get other levels in, we can't really, we don't need to worry about adjusting that. So we'll deal with that later. Um, we have a difficulty setting. We're only gonna be using, we're not really interested in the difficulty setting right now, but we have that. Start game here, what this will do is um, eventually I'll have a bind to the a, a, um, callback on start game that will change the scene to the game scene basically. And then we have uh, our select difficulty. Uh, the callback on that toggles the difficulty through easy, normal, hard, etc. And we have an exit which will just quit the client. So that's a very, as you can see, this menu menu scene is exceedingly simple because of all the other work we did. And that's why we did that. So now we're going to continue on by doing some new things. As you can see here, there's a select level on the high score toggles, but I haven't done those yet because we don't have high scores yet because we don't even have a game yet. And we don't have several levels because we don't even have one level yet. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to come into data levels and we have a tutorial.txt. So each level is going to be a .txt. And <clears throat> I'm going to make this bigger. As a, I'm trying to think. Hold on. Settings, settings, preferences. Let's make the size bit, uh, bigger for you guys. <clears throat> I'm not sure how. Well, hopefully you can see. Uh, <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. So, we're going to make the levels be as simple as possible. So, what we're going to do is create our own little level parser that's rather Pythonic, more or less. Um. Hmm. Hey, Sawyer. All right, so the first thing is we're going to allow a comment if you use the, um, the, the pound symbol or hashtag or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so the first thing first is blocks. Zero equals regular, or equals no block, no block. One equals regular, two equals bomb. And um, the tutorial levels are gonna have the two types of blocks. So we're not too worried about it. So what we're going to do is we're gonna come down here. We're going to say, we're gonna have a blocks and we're gonna have an end blocks and what we're gonna have here then is lines of blocks okay so we're gonna make it so that the blocks our, our screen is 800 by 600 right um, 800 wide by 600 tall so it's mainly a square 
So our blocks, let's say we have blocks that are 80 wide and 10 high. That way they're oblong, or 80 wide and 20 high. 80 by 20. Row is then, so row is then 10 by 10 for the playable area uh, for the blocks. Or actually, no, it's 10 by like 20, right? Uh, it's a breakout clone, Sawyer. All right, so we're going to put top row nothing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mm, I don't think that's what we want to do here. Let's make it. Let's make it forty by ten. So this can become twenty by thirty. I think that'll be a much better way of doing it. All right. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Oh wait, here we go. Uh, call twenty one. Okay, good. So we're gonna do this now. Thirty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two, whoop, ten, and then we'll just do twenty by twenty to start and see how that works. Um, hold on just a moment. Um, all right, so now we're going to actually design our level. And, um, all right, so we're going to do one, 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 one. One, 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 and we're gonna do one, oh, sorry, one, 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 one. Oh. One. 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 Perfect. Actually, that's kind of funny. Tut. We're just going to call it Tut. No, it won't be the next Minecraft. Um, okay, so this is the Tut. I'm going to make it one, one, one. What am I hitting when I do that? I don't know. I keep hitting something wrong. Cut. 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 Level. Okay, so we're gonna do one, 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 and then we do one. one. All right. So it's going to be this basically tut level, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do two full rows of. Right, we're going to start right here, and we're going to we're going to do some bombs right here just so people can see what they do, and then yeah, that should be good. So we're going to call this. Our, this is going to be our level structure, more or less, though. Okay. So now, we need to create a level parser. So we're going to have a new 
game. Game.py. Okay. So the game is going to import. Oh, does it even need that? Fine. Start game. Um, let's look in our scene really quick. And so our scene has a <clears throat> event handler already. It already has access to the screen, right? Screen equals self.manager.screen. Yeah. I could indeed hit the insert uh, button and then not have to delete every time you want to replace a character. That is true. Um, I, I tend to get messed up when I do that uh, on other parts of code, but that, that is a good point. Uh, if we go back to doing the level, I will try that. <coughs> um, no, we're going to change this to be more consistent. <clears throat> All right, so let's create a scene for our game right here. This is game. So now we're going to have a level. We're going to have a difficulty. Um, we are going to have a UI group. But we're not going to be using these UI groups because we're not going to be using focus or anything. Self dot score equals zero. Self dot score UI equals. Now let's open up our GUI. <clears throat> Um, we should be able to do just a basic UI elements. No, we have to do a text select and just uh, no callbacks and no focus. <clears throat> I leave. I believe by default. Okay, I just need to change the outlines. Okay, so we're gonna do a score UI. We're gonna take you. Yep. Wrong part there. Okay, so we're going to go to our UI group. Uh, name is going to be score text equals uh, one, two, three, four, five. And position is going to be in the top right. So we have 800 by 600, right? So our Y is going to be 10 for basically 10 padding. And our position is going to be, let's say, 750. Uh, we don't need focus size of that. We, don't, uh, we need. Oh, wait. Yeah, we do. Uh, we're going to do 32 size for our font. No callback. Focus background. Uh, I believe the way it's set up is. Um, yeah, I need focus background equals zero. Okay, focus outline equals none. Outline equals none. No outline. Color, uh, that should be good. And we're going to allow anti-aliasing. So we have our score UI now. We don't need toggle difficulty. Hmm. All right, now how does activate work? Because I have that function. Activate scene and data, OK. Activate self and my data. Yeah. 
if uh, self that level equals data level self that difficulty equals data difficulty there we go and that should be it I shouldn't really need to be anything else to activate because this handles whether it's the active scene and then we're just activating it with the data right okay and yeah that should be good for now so on update what we're going to do is um, string equals I believe there is a Python function for this so we're going to look this up what we want to do is take it so zero is five zeros right one is four zeros and then one etc so it pads it uh, Python, Python pad string here we go there we go, zfill3. Perfect. So string equals um, um, string equals string self so dot score dot zfill five. So dot score UI dot text equals string, I believe. Let's look at the GUI real quick. Text that is correct. So we can actually just do this all on one line, and then we don't need to do that. So now we can have a define play game. Self dot scene manager dot should be able to scene manager is by name, right? Yeah. Activate scene game with level equals self dot level and difficult was self that difficulty. <clears throat> so now we add a callback to the play game. And that should work. Now we have to go over here to main though and add a game. equals scene manager that game all right so I believe yeah that should that should work for now we'll see there we go so I actually need to pad that over to the right a little bit more because it's actually going off the screen so we're going to put our position then at 7, I believe 25 should do it. We're going to see real quick. So we now have our game window, basically. It's not doing anything yet. That's fine. We don't need that yet. Uh, escape should probably go back to the main menu. So... We're going to bind to that. Back to the main. So, and what we'll have is uh, boom. Very simply. And we go back to the menu. So now you see that this is part of why it's taking so long to get this game going, is we're putting in all of these helper programs or helper code to help us be able to move through our scenes without having to handle this in a more manual fashion. 
So now what we can actually do self.event handler. If we go to our GUI, right up here directly with the event handler, we're going to add a binding to escape that's going to do this. So add binding escape self dot back to main. I believe that's correct. Should be the escape key. Yes. So now when we run the game, let's say we go in game and we hit escape, we go back to the menu. And for the game, so now we're gonna add this same line to the menu, but the only change that's going to be had is we're going to change it to self.quit on escape. So now if you hit escape here, it's also going to quit the game. <coughs> um, so when we um, activate, we want to make sure our score equals zero because we want to make sure we have a new game element because um, we're restarting it, right? So over here in game, we're actually not going to be using a function. We're going to have a class game instance. Level, difficulty, and uh, should just be level and difficulty. Well, no, we're going to have our scene too scene first. Alright, so self.scene equals scene. Self dot level name equals level because we're gonna be handling things differently. Self dot difficulty equals diff difficulty. Okay. So now we need to make sure we're importing our game uh, our game import game. So now we have <clears throat> self.game equals none. When we activate, self.game will equal a game.game instance self self. We actually we don't even need to do anything else. If we come to the game here, we don't need this because they're in the scene. Perfect, that makes it even simpler. Okay, so we're gonna come here, we're gonna make sure our game has a define update, self, pass, find render, self, found screen, pass. So now, oop, not UI, I'm in the wrong scene. So now, render what we're going to do is we're gonna render the UI group after we render the game. So if self self dot game self dot game dot render screen and we will up uh, we don't need the UI group to update. I don't believe. What we do need is self dot game dot update. So we're gonna come to game now. <clears throat> Self dot event handler equals scene dot event handler. <coughs> All right. So <clears throat> let me just make sure this is running without error. It uh, appears to be okay. So now we don't the UI group that update is because we don't need that because we're not actually having an interactive UI on the game window. So what we're gonna do is self dot this stuff should be set by the level, I believe. You know what? 
paddle width. And we're going to make the paddle width 80. And and paddle width. And what are we going to do? We're going to make All speed is going to be, let's say, two. I'm going to make it three, and we'll say, ball speed different. going to be 2. And ball speed dif uh, difficulty multiplier. We're just going to do this that way we're, we're clear what it is. So now uh, what's going to happen is we have our ball speed defined and then we have a ball speed difficulty multiplier. So if we're on the first difficulty, we're not going to get this extra speed, right? If we're on second difficulty, we'll be at um, we'll be at six speed. Do we want to do that? Do we do we want to do that, or do we want to add speed per difficulty? We're gonna do a multiplier for now because it'll be three six and then 12. That will be a big difference though. Three, four and a half, nine. Hmm. We'll do that. We'll see. I'm not, I'm not really sure what we want to do with that yet. <clears throat> okay, so what we need to do now is we need to get our level parser going. Fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here we're going to do class level object. Fine. In it. So, comma, level name. So, self dot file equals open. <clears throat> import os os that path that join and it's going to be data levels data levels comma <clears throat> level name plus dot text This can be a read. <clears throat> so now we need to parse this object. So what we're going to have is So what we're going to do is go by the line, right? So we have um, current name equals none currently. And then what we're going to have is, yeah, I should do it. Okay, so. For line, actually we don't need read, just need line. For line in self.contents, line in. So this is how we're reading it, we're reading it line by line. 
if line that starts with oh I should bring this line equals line that split if not line continue we're gonna skip basically we're skipping content lines um, or commented out lines. So basically in our thing here, anytime you see a comment, anything after that is is uh, not included. Um, it doesn't matter if we have like a string with that in it, so we need to be aware of that. Always. Whoa! always ignores following. So we need to be aware of that not to use that symbol ever, basically, unless we want it to be a comment. <clears throat> All right, so now we're gonna see if the line dot, uh, wait, dot, Split and oh my gosh, my brain is not working today. We're gonna come over here. Python remove white space from yeah from end of string. What is it? Strip. Strip is what we want. Dot strip. Okay. Uh, strip is going to clear it all out, so there's all the white spaces removed. So if line that starts with, we know this is a block, basically. And actually, because of the way we're doing this, we really don't need these end, end things at all. It's just coming after the other things, more or less. Okay. I didn't even realize that. That's nice. That, that'll make it easier. Um, so if line starts with this setting, basically. So what we're going to do now is uh, current name equals line zero two, oh wait, one, two, eight of two, I believe. Let's test that. We're gonna we're gonna fire a Python to exe, and we're gonna create a little list. So a equals range ten or z. So z is zero to nine. So let's see, z one to negative two should be no. Okay, so it's z one to negative one. That's what we want. One to eight. Okay. So now we know. So we're right right here. So this is the name of the setting that we're setting, basically. Okay. Now we're continuing. Oh wait. If not current name in self dot data, self dot data, current name equals this. Basically, each line is going to be going inside that current data else self dot data current name dot append line there we go so we basically parsed it out into the lines as as named by the thing so we have that there we go so there's the level, but now we want to make sure we're getting the proper blocks. So now we have to parse the uh, blocks data that we just grabbed out. So we're going to do a new thing here now. I'm trying to think here.
Hey, Zay. Yep, we're working on the the breakout game, yeah? So what we're going to do is we're going to do this. We're going to have a self.blocks equals a list of blocks. And what we're going to do is for row in self.data blocks, we're going to parse it. So for character in row, here we go. If care equals zero, continue. We're skipping those. They're not. They're not the thing. Y equals zero. Rows or y x is in there. X equals zero. Y plus equals one. Here we go. X plus equals one. There we go. Oh, I forgot you're going to Chicago, Zay. Yeah, I forgot. Good. <laughs> That's how life's no fun after a week. No. So uh, if care equals otherwise, basically what we're going to do is self dot blocks. Dot append we're going to append a tuple of the x position, the y position, and the character. And we'll let the game figure out what that is, because we, we haven't defined what all of those are yet. Um, I'm not sure how I want to do that yet, but we're going to have to program those out. So maybe we'll do class block I'm in it. So, comma, x, y, lock id, self dot x equals x, self dot y equals y, and self dot block equals block. Take this, put this under level. I should put all of these down at the bottom below game. Um, be right back, guys. So now we're going to define in at the blocks what what those blocks do, basically. Um, but we will get to that in a bit. Self dot blocks dot append block. So now we're creating an actual block object for this, and that should be good. Now. this block width equals didn't we say 40 yep. block height 10 okay so now actually we want to make sure that the level is actually given for the block that way it has access to those data data bits as well. And this is important because what we're doing is we want to make sure that, you know, if you're creating a breakout game, you want to be able to modify all these different things when you do different levels, right? So what we're doing is we're making it so that later on we can churn out levels really quickly without having to hard code them, unless we want to add a feature. For instance, we're going to have two different types of, of uh, block. We're going to have regular blocks and we're going to have bomb blocks. Bomb blocks are supposed to explode everything around them, so we um, want to handle that, right? 
So, we should now have our level data parsed. So we're gonna to come to our game instance now. Self dot block blocks. Self dot level dot blocks. Pretty simple. And then what we're going to do is take the things that we care about from the level. So we care about here we go. So that level that data block width zero. And we're gonna do this, we're gonna get define self comma name comma index is going to equal zero we're going to assume they want that first index unless they specify unless we specify otherwise return self dot data name index all right here we go so self dot level dot get data block with So we're gonna try and parse this. So try r equals float r. So if it's we're gonna try and if it's a number, we're going to try and convert it into a number automatically. Except pass return r. There we go. So now we're gonna get our data block width, self dot height, self dot level dot get data block. Height. Okay, so now self dot paddle width, self dot level dot get data paddle width, and self dot paddle height. We're just going to say equals ten for now, and we're going to do self dot Ball speed equals self dot level dot get data ball speed. Wait, isn't it ball speed? Yeah, ball speed. Ball speed times self dot level dot. Whoa, what am I doing? These are functions, not list indexes. Did I do that down here too? Oh my gosh, I did. I need to wake up. This isn't going well as a tutorial. Okay, self.level dot get data ball speed difficulty multiplier difficulty multiplier multiplier so it's times this times self dot difficulty minus one and we're going to make that into an integer because uh, Pygame doesn't like when you're using uh, decimal places for positioning so we have our ball speed now hopefully we're going to fire up the, we're going to run the game, make sure we don't have any errors. We're probably going to have one, at least one. Yeah, we do. Well, let's see what our error is so we can fix that before we move forward. Ball speed, difficulty, multiple. Oh, I have put two L's in multiplier. Ah, my bad. So we're going to hit run game again. Now we're going to see. Nope, oh, another error. What's the error this time? Looks like our blocks are loading. It's in the game itself that's erroring. Game instance is no attribute difficulty. Is it seen that difficulty? Yeah. All right. 
Oh, we set the difficulty after, that's why. We did things a little bit out of order. All right, so it's loading now. So everything is loaded. No issues so far. So we're going to have a paddle object. I believe pygame.rect requires pygame.docs.rect pygame.rect left top width height so we're going to do starting out 0 0 width height self.rect.center equals 400 300 because we're at 800 by 600 screen um oh wait <laughs> uh the center should be at x 400 but it should be at y 6 uh, 95 no wait, 595. There we go. That way it's at the bottom of the screen, not the middle of the screen. That would be silly. Uh, define render self comma screen. Um, screen, oh, uh, game dot, I'll do the self dot, Outline color equals white and self dot color equals let's say we're gonna make it a light green. Okay. Pi game dot draw dot rect. So I'm gonna come to the pi game dot draw module. Drawing the rect. We're going to draw on the surface, a color, and the rectangle. Pretty simple. Screen, self.color, self.rect. Oh, wait. Is it rect then color? Color then rect. Yes. So width equals zero on this number. We're going to redo this. Pygame.draw.rect. It's not capital, I don't believe. I am to draw a rect screen self that outline color self that rect and this has one width. All right, so we're going to create a paddle. Self that paddle equals a paddle object. Dun dun dun. Who'd have thought? And we're going to have self dot paddle width self dot paddle height. Self dot paddle dot render on the screen. And we have a paddle at the bottom of the screen now. We're actually gonna lift that up a bit. So we want that away from the bottom a little bit. We're going to pat it in 10 pixels, the same as we did with our um, score at the top. So we have our paddle down here now. So now we want to make the paddle equivalent to the mouse position, right? So, because I believe that was what we decided uh, was using the mouse position. Yes, I think that's correct. Not entirely sure. 
But we're going to do that for now. So come over to our GUI. And I believe the UI has a mouse X position. It does. So what we're going to do is when we update self.paddle center x equals self dot event handler dot mouse x if self dot paddle dot x is less than zero self dot or self dot paddle dot left sorry paddle dot left equals zero we want to make sure it doesn't go off the screen and if self dot paddle dot right is greater than or equal to 600 self dot paddle dot rect dot right equals 599 uh, because it's 0 to 599 for a 600 width rect dot rect all right so let's see if it moves now Oops, okay, so we need to come over here. It's less than 800 for 799. And what we want to do is when we're on the game instance, we want to make sure we don't have the mouse visible. So we're kind of going to come back to our scene, and we want to make sure. So when we start the game, actually, I don't think we ever need the mouse. So we're just going to do that here when we're initializing. So if we think pygame.mouse set visible. To false. So we're gonna do right here. Pygame dot mouse. Microphone dot, muted. Ooh. Microphone activated. Woo. Dot, dot set visible false. And let's see if that does what we want it to do. There we go. All right. So. That's working. There we go. Uh, what time is it? We've been through an hour now, but we're really close to getting the game up. So let's uh, render our blocks now. Let's render those blocks that we've got. Okay. Self.rect equals dot Correct. X times self dot width. Y times self dot height. We're positioning them now. So the X and the Y is 0, 1, 2, 3, but we want to make sure that they're for their width. So we're multiplying it by their width. And then we're doing self dot width and self dot height. So we now have the rect for that block. Find render self. And screen. So again, we're gonna do we're gonna do the same thing. Self dot outline color equals. Uh, we'll make it white again. But we're gonna do self dot color. We're gonna make this a randomized color scheme. Because why not? So we're gonna import random. So. Self type color equals random dot random. We're gonna say that it can be anywhere from seventy five to two fifty five. Well, not two fifty five. We'll do it two hundred, and we're gonna do that for each of these. Okay, and we're going to. Just copy the exact same render here. And then up here in the game, for i in self.blocks, i.render to the screen. And now, when we go to the game, we crashed. What did, what did I do? How, how do we, what did, oh. Uh oh, I misspelled the random that random thing once. Damn it. Rand int.
All right. So something here is not right. <laughs> uh, I know exactly what it is. When we go, when when we did our level parser, we continued when we were at zero. We don't want that. We want to make sure we're also incrementing x when we do that. So now we do it, and voila, we have tut level, and um, we actually should probably change how that's going. So what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, y plus 100. Top of the screen, we don't want things on. And then when we come over here to our game, we're going to make it larger. And what we're going to do is we're going to take these. We're going to put them here. And we're going to take a couple of these. Put them in between here. And now we're just going to expand on the size here. And we're going to use insert like what's like somebody suggested. Uh, inserts just. I'm not used to using insert, so I'm just going to mess it up by using insert. So we'll just we'll just do this because I I won't mess it up as easily. <laughs> I won't mess it up as easily, you guys. I'm bad. But tut level. Is that correct? So what we're going to do is we're going to actually change this. So we're going to try the insert again. Okay, I gotta turn the insert off. That's driving me nuts, but. There we go. There we go, tut level-ish. Okay, so this isn't working quite right yet. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go There we go. Let me scooch everything over a little bit. Oh wait. Oh shit. There we go. Let's see if that works. There we go. Tut level. Well, no, not quite. I don't know, my brain is derping hard because this should be really easy to do. There we go. I just have one extra thing here that I did out of place. There we go. All right, tut level. Dun, dun, dun. And we want more space here between these. So we're gonna take this, put that down here between these. There we go. 
Um, no, I can't use spaces instead of zeros because, um, I mean, what I could do is do, you know, just one zero for an empty line. But the way that the parser works is it trims the line. And let me show you here. So here when it's parsing, each line is stripped. And what strip does, it removes the uh, new line character, and it also removes any spaces or tab, any white space, basically. So if I use spaces, uh, it wouldn't work, unfortunately. Um, otherwise, you're correct. That would be much easier to read. But um, if I did that, everything would get shifted around funky. And that's not really what we want. So we're going to use zeros because that's simpler uh, from a programming aspect right now. Okay, so we have that. Now we're going to create a bowl. So now, ball is kind of cool because we have a sphere basically. But because of how it works, we can collide it with a rect anyway. We're just going to make the rect slightly smaller than what it should be. So what we want is radius. So self dot radius radius. So now what we have is self dot rect equals pi game dot rect, and um, we're gonna position this at four hundred, and then we're gonna minus it by five hundred, I guess. And what it's going to be is, uh, yes, times 0.75, and we're going to see, we're going to see about this, and we're going to draw a circle. Let's look up the draw command for circle. Circle goes to a surface, color, a position, radius, and a width. Okay. So circle, screen, color, self dot rect dot center, self dot radius. Outline color self dot rect dot center and self dot radius. And what we're going to do is we're also going to draw the outline of the uh, rect. just so we can make sure that we're making the correct size rectangle. So let's create a ball now. Uh, we're going to make ball radius uh, 15 to start. See how that goes. I'm going to blocks down here. Oop, I forgot to render it. I'm going to render the ball after the blocks. Um. All right, so our, our uh, rect is very small, actually. And the color of the ball isn't right. The ball should be, we're going to make the ball like a really a, a, a red. Dark-ish sort of red. Okay, so we need to change the our rect. So we're just gonna do the radius because that actually should work properly-ish. No, we need a little bigger than that. So we're gonna do radius times one point two five. All right, more or less. Uh, we probably wanted to overlap a little bit, so we'll do 1.5, and that should give us a rectangle that's a little bit larger than the ball, but not too bad. Yeah, almost perfect. Um, the reason for that is it's fine to have the, the front edge of the ball uh, go over the... Um, 
the um, block, but not for the collision to look funky. So we, I'm going to err on the side of that. Rather than getting into, you know, circle versus rectangular collisions, because that can be more involved than what I'm trying to do with this. And we want it to get done rather quickly. So let's do this. Define check collision. So, all right. Check ball. So. All right, no. This doesn't even need to do anything. The ball will update against it. So we're going to do this. Define update self comma blocks. And so what we're going to do is we're going to update this against the paddle and the blocks, right? So first things first, if self.rect.write greater than or equal to 800, self.rect.write equals 799, uh, we're going to do this, self x direction equals 1 and self dot y direction equals negative 1. We're going to start out with it going away from your paddle because, you know, it would just be mean if it's right there. <laughs> and what will be is self dot x direction equals negative 1. Well, equals mm, we're going to do times equals negative one. Because we might have different x directions, like x2, x3, so we're just going to alter that. We don't want it actually to slow it down or something when we get to that later. If self.rec.left is less than zero, self.rec.left is zero, self.x direction times equals negative one. And then, self.rect dot false rect bottom greater than or equal to five ninety nine self dot game dot lost equals true. If self dot rec dot top less than zero, self dot rec dot top equals zero. Well, actually we're gonna do less than 50. Self dot y direction times equals negative one. So self.rect.move IP, self.x direction, and self.y direction. So now uh, our ball should update. So we're going to call that. So when the game updates, self.ball.update, paddle, self.ball. Now the blocks are going to need to update against each other in case they explode, but what did we break? Global name, oh, self.paddle, okay. So the ball is now moving. moving right through the blocks, because we haven't programmed that in. I just want to make sure that it's going to hit the sides properly. Bounce, bounce, yeah, that looks proper. Or maybe, uh, hold on. Fifty, and this will just do 25 or something. Zero, it can just be zero, who gives a shit.
Okay, so first things first, we're gonna go to our level. We're gonna change our ball speed. That ball speed is too slow. We're gonna make it 10. And the ball speed mu uh, multiplier, we're gonna make 1.2. Is it not using ball speed? Hold on just a moment. I believe that is an issue where I haven't set that. Ah. So if that's speed. 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 And then up here. Uh... Okay, and then we're changing this back because that's suddenly going to get really fast. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here to the ball where it's moving. We're just gonna multiply our direction by self that speed. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna make these ints here because uh, we don't want it to error out when we get uh, non-whole numbers. And that allow us to control our speed much more fine-tunedly. Uh, what? Uh, what? <laughs> what did I do? Let's see this. Let's uh, print self dot speed. Put this over here. What's our speed? Zero. Why is our speed zero? Ball speed should be three. Um, bum bum bum. Everything else was grabbing properly from the from the game object here. Oh, da 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 da. One plus that. That was the difficulty. Now it's moving at three. So if we go back and we change the difficulty to regular. Okay, and if we change it to hard. Okay, that is actually really hard. I'm gonna tone that down just a bit. We're gonna do 1.25 and I think that should be fine. We're going to adjust our ball radius in game. And we're gonna make that a 10 for now. So I think that will work a little bit better. Yeah, that's more like what we'd be expecting, I think. And actually, I think three is too slow to start. So we're gonna start it at four. And we're gonna only adjust by 1.2. So there's four. And if we do regular, and we do hard, still too fast, geez, 1.1. Yeah, it's not too bad. Did that error? Wait a second. We did get an error. What was the error? Ball has no attribute game. Oh! So we're gonna come in here and all of these game, these objects now, we're gonna change this. We are going to change this so that each of these takes the game object first. That way they all have access to the other objects. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so the level then needs to have game. So it's self, comma, self dot game, comma, x, y care. Okay. And then we're going to come over here to the game instance. When we create all these, it's going to make sure it does this. So when it creates the level, it's going to do this. 
All right. And then down here, when we're doing the collision for the ball, it's going to check against self dot game dot all of those instead of this. So now we have self dot game. Now we can be able to do anything. I am indeed using Python. So now this ball should go flying off the screen. Yeah, and be fine. Good. <clears throat> this is Python and Pygame. All right. So now we need to um, handle breaking the balls. So the game is going to have an add score. So self.score plus plus equals self.difficulty. You get more difficulty if you get more points for using if you're getting more difficulty. Um, Self.scene.score equals self.score. And now we're going to check our collisions. So when we're updating the ball, if uh, for i in, all right, all right, all right. we're going to do the blocks first. Those are simpler. For block in self dot dot game dot blocks, if self dot rect dot collide rect with the block rect. How long have I been? Uh, this game is going to be a breakout clone, and I've been programming in Python for oh my nine almost ten years now, quite a while actually. I don't even realize how long it is sometimes. It's been a long time. A long time. So we're going to check our positioning. We're going to check if we're hitting them on the left or if we're hitting them uh, uh, underneath, basically. Do you have to define the blocks, like the location, the sign? Yes, we're doing that in our level here. We're putting the blocks as leveled out in a, uh, placed out in a grid and then we're defining the block width and the block height so these are all on the level so I can create or you can create you know if you continue this tutorial more levels that uh, are very easily defined you have complete control over it okay so the first thing we want to do is see if block dot rect dot bottom is less than self dot rect uh, what do you think about this? Dot rect dot. Oh no! Here we go. If self dot rect dot right. No. Okay. Okay. Left is less than self dot rect dot center x is less than self uh, block dot rect. Okay, so what I'm checking here is if the block's left side is less than the center of the re of, of our uh, block, uh, ball, and the block's right side is greater than it, then we're obviously hitting it underneath or above, right? So block dot kill and self dot y direction times equals negative one and otherwise um no well, not necessarily always let's do this l if uh block dot rect dot top and bottom then we're hitting it on the right or the left. So that x direction. And then else. Now here is the cool part. This is if we're hitting it on the corner. Salt dot x direction and y direction are changing, more or less. So what we're gonna do, now we're gonna add a kill thing to a block. Find kill self. Self dot game dot add score, right? And then uh, equals 
true. Uh, so that dead equals true. This should be false. So if self dot dead return, it's not going to render if he's dead. And then here, uh, if block dot dead continue. We don't care about if the block is dead, um, more or less. We want to ignore them so they disappear. Now, if this were an explosive block, it's also going to blow up the ones around it and do an animation, but we haven't done that yet. So, we're going to... We have a bug. What's our bug? So when it hits, game instance has no attribute score. Self that's seen that score, I guess. We don't care. The game instance itself doesn't have a score. Okay, that's fine. All right. Well, let's see what happens with our score. There. So this is a this is a slight problem. It just destroyed a whole bunch of things. So the <laughs> the problem is. Down here, we want to make sure it's hitting the one that's closest to it and not moving so fast. That is a problem. So what we're going to do is change this a little bit. We're going to do we're going to have a raw update function. Okay? And what this is is we're doing it by we're just doing it by direction and direction. And what we're going to do what we're going to do is an update what's going to happen is for i in x range int self dot speed self dot raw update so now it's going to break that update uh, that ball into updating several times and checking those collisions so now that's interesting well let's change our speed to one and see what happens if we change our speed to one. Well, wait. Well, that should have worked. Why did. I'm a confused, guys. I'm confused. That should be working. It's. Is it not bouncing properly? Hold on just a sec. Did I, did I do that wrong? Here, let me see here. It's self.rec.left. self dot y direction is changing. Yeah, that should be right. It's changing the direction the wrong way. Yeah, but the problem is, from the programming perspective, it should be correct. All right, let's come here. Let's slow our ball speed down to one. And let's, let's watch what happens. Because in theory, this should work the exact same way, just being slower. Oh, it's hitting both of them. That's the problem, it's hitting both of them. 
and it's bouncing it up. Oh, okay. Um, so we need to handle this slightly different, differently. And I need to think about this because what's happening is it's hitting both the blocks because we're not using actual spherical collisions. So we're going to change this and we're going to do a circle collision on the on it because we need to. Oops. Um Yeah, it's bouncing it upwards on that one because what's happening is it's moving when it, when it collides, its x position, it, it, its y position is changing, right? So now the y position is on the left side of it. So basically, when it hits that other one, it's on the left side of the other one. And when you hit it on the left side, it's supposed to change your y direction, but not if you're hitting it on the bottom. So the problem is it's not properly figuring out where it's colliding. So we're going to collide this with uh, now a. Um, circular collision and I'm trying to remember the proper method for doing a circle to a rectangular collision if I recall because it's really simple you don't have to use cosine or sine or anything like that you just have to do uh, based on the radius from the center more or less Well, we're going to look it up instead of reinventing the wheel. The wheel. Circle to the right. Uh, wait, we have Clyde Circle? Do we have, do they already have a function for that? Glide point. Yes, that was it. You should be able to. If block.rect.inflate self dot radius self dot radius that collide point self direct that center we've collided there we go that should do it should do it so we're going to take all of this code because this is actually not bad I don't think and we're going to see what happens because, in theory, it should only collide, be colliding with the one. It ended up do working the same way. <laughs> um, hold on. Let's do this. Let's see if this seems to break anything. Oh, no, you know what we can do? You know what we can do? We can do this. We can do this. So what we're going to do, what we're going to do is this. Changed equals false. So the first time we hit something, so if changed, block.kill, continue. Elif, and then we're going to have changed equals true. There we go. So it's only going to get be affected by the first block it hits, even if it's hitting multiple. So on this one, for instance, it's hitting two, but it's only being affected by the first one it hits. That should do it. That should do it. We'll see. 
All right. So now that we have that, <laughs> now that we have that, we had to collide against our paddle. Now our paddle, we want it to be uh, adjusting uh, the direction of our ball a lot. For instance, now we, there's a couple of ways we can do this, right? We can have the paddle arbitrarily set the ball's direction. Or we can have the paddle respond to the ball's direction. So, for instance, if we go back to the picture we drew, let's say the ball is right here, right, and it collides. Now, we could make it so that all these directions just determine that if you hit the paddle at that point, you're going in that direction. Otherwise, we could have is we could have them be a um, add or subtract to the direction. Because it's simply going to replace the y's direction. The y isn't really ever changing much. It's the x direction that's changing. Well, actually, it changes the y direction the more to the center you are, and the x the more to the side you are, I guess. Yeah. So what's going to happen is, basically, uh, hitting it straight up in the center, the center block here, from these two, these two segments, all it's going to do is uh, leave the X completely alone in the center, and the Y is going to be changed and multiplied by uh, probably 0 0.1 or something. And so it's going to go boom, and it's going to start speeding up if you keep hitting it in the center, and the X direction isn't changing. But if you hit it on, uh, say, the right-ish side, What's going to happen is it's going to leave the y direction the same and it's going to adjust the x direction slightly faster. That way it's moving more side to side. And if you hit it on the furthest edge, it's going to decrease the y speed, uh, the y direction a little bit. That way it slows it down. And it's going to increase the x direction quite a bit. We're going to try it that way and see if that ha if that works. So we're going to have a define ball check self. <laughs> I'm a ball. And what's going to happen is if self.rect.collide rect self.game.paddle self self.game.paddle.checkball because we want uh, oh whoa we didn't mean to do that we just wanted to check ball we don't actually need it to um, reference ourselves we grab that up there we, we want to keep that code in the paddle because that's going to be rather complex and we already have a rather complex ball collision checking so we're going to be doing that in the paddle so if not self.rect.collide rect, we're going to do this. Ball equals self.game.ball. Basically, it's like, uh, all right, we can just run ball check now. We don't even need to check the collision here. So we will be doing it twice. So self.game.paddle.checkball. Or, actually, we can just do it in an update right here. And now, we don't even need to do it right here. We'll just run it when we do the paddle update. So let's go back up to our game object up here at the top. And here, we're going to do this. So, .paddle.update. No. We do want it going off the ball because the ball could be moving fast enough to skip it if we aren't running, uh, triggering it off the ball. So, okay, so we're just gonna do it this way, even if it's kind of funky, but it is, it is fine. All right, so first things first now, What we're going to do is check if we know that the ball has collided with the paddle. 
So we know that the right y direction is inverting no matter what. Times equals negative one. There, the ball direction has changed. But now we have to segment out the, the ball. So we want this to have um, five segments, depending on how far it is from the center. So we're going to do this distance equals absolute ball dot rect dot center y minus self dot rect dot center y. There's our distance from the center, the dif dis distance of the ball from the center of our paddle when it collides. So now we have our width, right? We have a width of our paddle, right? So what we have is um, uh, self, uh, give me a second, I need to think about this real quick. Uh, um, okay, so that will be now, um, Distance two equals self dot width times zero point five divided by distance. If this distance else distance two equals zero, because you don't want to divide by zero, it breaks the world, you know. All right. Let me think about this for a sec. So let's say we have uh, width of 80. So now we have 40 divided by distance. So if it's 20, that will be 0.5. Okay. So what we have now, if distance if distance to is less than 0.3, less than or equal to 0.3. No, we're gonna do 0.25. Ball dot y direction times equals 0 0.1. We're gonna we're 0 0.25. We're gonna increase the speed uh, if it's there. Uh, we're gonna slow down. No, we're not gonna slow down that. Lf. Distance to less than or equal to 0.7, we'll say, not really sure yet. Bold at y direction is the same, but now we need to adjust it. So if we're hitting it on the right and it's coming from the right, we're going to slow down the x direction a little bit. Not necessarily enough to completely negate it, but a little bit. Well, actually, no, we are negating it, but we're slowing it down. If ball.rect.center x ball.x direction less than zero, it's going to the left right now. If ball. Dot, um, Rect that center x greater than self direct that center x. It's hitting us on the right side. Ball dot x direction times equals negative 0.75. So we're slowing it down and we're reversing the direction of the ball. Uh, 
actually no, it's 0.5. It's going to be point, point 0.75 the other way. Or point 0.1. We're just going to completely reverse. Else, ball dot x direction times equals zero, uh, one point two five. One point two five. Pretty much. Now, else, I'm going to change this slightly. Rect center x is less than ours, but it's moving to the right. Boom. Now, else, right here. Now is where we get funky. So ball dot y direction going to be times equal Oh wait. We're not slowing it down here. Why are we slowing it down here? Times equals one point two five. There you go. Times equals zero point five. We're slowing down the y direction if we're hitting it on the side. What? What am I doing here? And now this code is going to get changed slightly in that the differences are going to be much more extreme. Let's see, let's see how this works. Let us see. <laughs> okay, that's not quite right. Something something is wrong here. <laughs> that's kind of a humorous bug though. Alright, so what are we doing here? Let's let's just stop adjusting the y direction for right now. It seems okay to me. Yeah, so I hit it in the center, so we're primarily hitting it there. Let's see if we hit it on the side here. Uh, our x direction didn't get changed at all. There, the x direction got changed. Okay. Okay, should do this. Okay, so the left side isn't adjusting properly. Direction is less than zero, so it's going this way. Oh, I have to adjust the signs here. Right? Is that right? Oh, wow! <laughs> I, there's an interesting bug. Okay, so let's see over here. Okay, something is not right here, so we need to change this. Unfortunately. Let's adjust this. Let's just do width by distance. And what we're going to do is if it's less than point, point 0.3, we're going to say it's on the left side, right? So on the left side, what's going to happen is the if ball dot x direction is um, less than zero. It's going to reverse it. Ball dot x direction times equals 
negative uh, negative 1.25. So we're going to make it speed up a bit, hopefully. Else ball that x direction. Oh, wait. Times equals 0.75. Else ball to x direction times equals negative 1.25. We want to speed up if it's already going left or slow down if it's going the other way. Okay. So let's just get rid of all of this for right now. LF distance 2 is less than or equals to 0 0.5. What's going to happen is, well, wait, 0 0.2 0.4. It's going to be a less severe point seven five point two five. Okay. And then if we're less than zero whoops. If we're less than zero point six, now we swap. So that it's pot. Okay, so we're on the right side now. So if we're going to the left, okay, so what we do is greater than zero. So we're going to the right. Yeah, that should be right. 0 0.6 should change nothing. 0 0.8 now, we're going to the right. Whoa, how did I do that? Okay, so if we're going to the right, we're going to times equals This is wrong. Uh, my brain is not working, guys. I'm sorry. So, if it's already moving right, and we hit it on the right, it's going to do times 1.25. Otherwise, it's going to be negative 0.75. And then finally, else zero times equals one point five or minus equals let's see how that works. How is that? What, okay, so what's going on here? So if it's on the left side, print very left, print slide left, print center, print slight right, print very right. So this is the interesting part where things just don't seem to be working the way they should be. So we're going to see where we're hitting here. I might make the paddle bigger for debugging. So this is very right. Why is they both why are they both very right? Oh. Aha! That's what was going on. Okay. Is 
see if that does it. Very left. There we go. Now that's working better. Very left. So it's adjusting it back rather slowly. Whoa, why are they both very left now? <laughs> okay, wait. What? Print distance comma distance to. Let's just. Is it every time the same number? It's every time the same number. <sighs> oh. Something is wrong here. Some, wait, what? X, I'm doing the wrong one. I was doing the wrong one, guys. I am very bad. I was comparing their Y positions, not their X positions. Okay. Distance equals self dot width divided by distance times zero point five. Wait, I want distance from this, I want that put into a percent. It is percent. Hold on, let's make our paddle bigger because it's just getting frustrating. Just for right now. So we're hitting very right. We're hitting still very right. Hit right here. Do very left. Okay, something's not right here. Mm. Crap, man. I need to think better here. So distance from center is self dot rec dot center x minus their ball. Okay. So if it's negative. Should be negatives. Negative. Zero point five, very low. Or well, it's zero point six. Negative zero point two. Six. And what we're gonna do is we have to, is we're gonna have to change how this is doing it because it's not right. X direction equals negative two or negative three. Else it's 
call this negative one. Slight left equals negative two equals negative one. And then and then we have equals two one two and we have three two we'll see about that we're gonna hard code these in for, for first Oh, and I missed it somehow. Whoa. Okay, so we're gonna do this. There we go. That seems better. Um, that seem that seems better because what what we're doing is if it's already moving left from putting it to the fastest speed, it's already moving right. You know, and we hit it on the right, it's going to be going like that. But if we, right there, it's going really fast. But if I were to hit it now on the right, oh no. Rather slowly. Slowly, and then if we do it. Well, I'll put that as a coding thing to clean that up and make it work better. So we'll do this. Because otherwise we're gonna to spend too much time debugging it. Code task, clean up paddle ball collision response, make it feel more natural. And for the blocks, code task, clean up block, ball, vision to avoid weird direction changes. All right, we're, we're gonna need to end this really soon here um, because it's getting a little longer than I want it to go for this one. So for the tutorial level, we're just going to have all ones. We're not going to have anything like that. One regular. That's it for tutorial. The tutorial one is simplest level. <clears throat> now what we're going to do is we're going to do a harder level. Uh, let's go to data, levels, copy this. Paste, rename, phase two. We're going to edit this with Notepad. And what we're going to do is we're going to blank all these lines out. And we're going to use insert so this will go faster, hopefully. I, I want to get uh, a couple of levels here just so we can create the level selector. for the menu, and then uh, not much else besides that. So turn and insert, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do 
one, 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 one. Yep. Are you kidding me? I said one, uh, one. And we're gonna do one, 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 one. One, zero. Zero. One, there we go. One, 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 one. One, one, one. And we're going to put this as a smaller paddle again. Three, three, and then we're just going to put in some, put in some random like three swaps of stuff. And this one is going to be a AD with a faster baseball speed. There we go. All right, so we have levels now. Let's do the level selector menu really quick if we can. So we're going to scene, we're going to come to menu. Let's do level. And we're going to do select level. So self.scene manager.activate scene. Level select, level, level, uh, self.level. So it's going to start on self.level. That way it's not an issue. And add callback equals self.select level. So right now, Copy the menu. And we're nearly done with this, guys. Uh, so we don't care about difficulty here. We don't care about the game. Do you want a UI group? We don't need the score though. Wait, what? Oh crap. This is what I want to change. Level select. I'm going to name this level select. Okay. Boom. So, what we're going to do is we're going to populate this. in a rather interesting way. And we're going to override some stuff.
Mm, no toggle difficulty. No play game. No select. Yet. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some text. First, we're going to create the top text, which is going to be the label, more or less. And then... Focusable equals fall. Ah, uh, true. And then what it's going to do is it's going to keep going next. If not self dot focus dot focusable, self dot go next. It's just going to keep going until it finds the next focusable um, element, more or less. And then go previous is going to be the exact same thing right here. That way we can uh, self dot go previous. That way uh, we can skip that label. So we come back to our scene. We're going to grab this, put this here. Self dot label equals. Text select a level. And we're going to put this at 1010, 10, right up at the top. Position, we're going to put this as uh, 64, 64. Um, focusable equals true. All right, focus equals false. There we go. So now we can set that here. So we're going to do focus a bull equals false. We don't want it to be focusable, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a text select object for each level and what we're going to do is it's going to we're going to create a semi scroll wheel style thing so what we're going to do is self dot levels equals this for i in i believe we have os imported i'm not sure nope import os so we're going to have the os uh, we're going to grab all of the files uh, in, in a in the directory. Python find all files in directory. Here you go. So you can use glob. There you go. That's what we want. We want import glob and import OS. Actually, we just need glob. We don't even need OS. But we're going to grab OS in case we run into a wall. We're going to do, oh, actually, we do want OS. Okay, so for I in glob dot glob OS dot path dot join data levels comma star dot text txt. And we're going to print I because we want to see what it looks like more or less, more or less. And we have our levels then. So let's uh, go to our main. We're going to create levels equals scene dot level select scene manager 
And we're gonna see if this runs, more or less. Select level. Select a level. And we've got data levels, level the third, phase two, and tutorial. Okay. So what we have Python OS select file name from path. Yes, yeah, select the name from path. Okay, NT path is what we want. We're going to come up here to the scene. We're going to grab a module called NT path. And we're going to do print NT path I. And we're going to see, we're going to confirm that we. NT path, I believe, is not a standard Python module. Oh. Oh, NT path base name. Gotcha. All right, base name. Run game. So we have level third, phase two, and tutorial. So we have i2 equals this, and we have i3 equals i.split zero. Well, actually, I just split text zero. So we're grabbing the name. Is right there. So basically, now we have the name of the level. Okay? So we're going to do is create a new GUI text select. So we're going to name this as level dash percent s percent name text equals name it is focusable position doesn't matter because we're going to change that position uh, later more or less uh, our size is going to be 32 by 32 we have focus outline equals uh, three pixels more or less okay so now we have focused now focus size we're going to make we're going to make uh, 64 unfocused can be 32 okay so what we're going to do is uh, and we're going to make it visible equals false. Visible equals false right now. And we're going to do self.levels.append in. Delta level names name percentage. So what I'm doing here is we have a list of levels to keep everything in order, and then we have a dictionary that points the name to a level. That way we can easily grab it. Now if I look back at my GUI, I believe there is a way to grab the next element. Um, new. Okay. So we're gonna grab this if I get sibling get next self okay so get next is
git next equals self dot group. Not self dot group. Return them. That will help us later. So index equals self dot groups dot index self. Self plus one. If index greater than or equal to len self dot group elements index equals zero return self dot group dot elements index and then for previous get previous and we're going to do minus one. And if index is less than zero, index equals len self dot group dot elements minus one. All right, so we have get next and get previous now. So what we're going to do is when we render, we're going to for l uh, for level in self dot levels level dot visible equals false. Okay. Self dot level names self dot level are visible is true. Wait cur equals this. So current dot visible equals two and current dot focus equals true. And what we're going to do now is cur dot get next dot visible equals true. Cur dot get next dot focus equals false and then again oh wait we have focus oh dot UI group dot focus. There we go. And then let's do this. Self dot UI group dot focus. And I believe UI group dot focus should focus on an element. Yes. Self dot UI. Oh, actually, what we can do is here. Self dot level names self dot level dot focus. Basically, we're setting the focus onto the level that we're on, right? So we don't need to set the focus now. Cur equals self dot UI group dot focus. Cur dot visible equals true. And cur dot get previous dot visible equals true. So it's just these two. What we're going to do is cur dot position equals ten comma. We're going to put it. Uh, we're going to have eight hundred width or six hundred height. So we're going to put the position at uh, three hundred. Well, four hundred, and then cur dot get next dot position equals 25 it's indented a little because it's smaller and we're gonna put it at 500 and then cur dot get previous that position equals 25 and 300 um, and what we're going to do is um, Mm -hmm. 
What we're gonna do is um, self dot level equals self dot UI group dot focus dot name and then self dot there's a scene manager scene manager dot, um, I, need to, I need to get main. That scenes okay. Menu that level salt that level. Now we're gonna see really quick if this works. Something broke, obviously. Nothing can just work. We're gonna see what the error message is. Cool object is not callable. What? Oh. Oh, no, 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 that's right. Self dot level. That set focus, that's what it is, right there. And takes exactly two arguments, one given. It's set focus true, yeah. Okay, select level. Okay, so what we need is Change this a little bit. I want to make sure the label stays visible. Tutorial. Whoa. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to pop the label out of the group. And then when we go to render, self.label.render screen. Because the label really shouldn't be affected by all of this. There you go. Now we can select our level. Let's do level the third. Okay, so what we have to do is callback. So we don't actually need to do this right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add the callback. Callback equals self dot back to main. And we're going to run game. A new level of the third. We're going to start game. And it works! There you go. And you have scores now uh, up in the top. It doesn't keep track of high score yet, but it's pretty close. So let's do an end game uh, scene. And we'll do our high scores then. So we now have game over. Be game over. Self dot. Uh, we don't care about, well, we do care about level, don't we? Yeah. Self dot game. Data. Self dot score equals data score. Yeah, should be what we need here. And 
I'm gonna grab it from here because I like this one here. Self dot label equals game over. That's the UI group. And again, we're going to have escape. We don't need to. It's going to pass. We don't have anything to update. Um, there we go. So we have a, a label here. All right, so we're just going to create these. We actually don't even need to name them for this. So we're going to have, oh wait, no, yeah, no, we do. Self dot, self dot header equals this. Self dot, score equals, score, and we're going to say score to zero. And we're going to have, Self dot level equals this level tutorial. We have a level and we have a difficulty. Hey Ascandra, thanks for the follow. All right, so uh, then we're gonna have difficulty, difficulty, and we're gonna have difficulty here. And then we're gonna have some final text under here, which is header, and then we're gonna have self.text equals this, and we're gonna say hit escape to return to main menu. Boom. Hey, hon. Hi. All right, so position 10, 10, 10 for game over. That's 64, 64. This is gonna be 32. 32, and we're gonna put this down below the other one. I'm gonna put this at, uh, I think 50 should be fine. So now the score now, we're gonna put this down. We're gonna put this 50 over. So all of these are going to be 50 over to kind of tell you, you know, how well you did. And we're going to put this one at 200. And this one's going to be 250. And this one's going to be 300. And we're going to put our size for these at, well, let's say 45 for some reason. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the text of these. So self dot score dot text equals score percent s percent self dot score. And the same with these other ones. We're just going to take this. We're going to do down here self dot level equals level. And then difficulty. Um, difficulty. Whoa. One diff equals easy. We're going to convert this back. LF self dot diff. Difficulty equals two, diff equals regular, else diff equals hard. Okay. And so we're going to have diff equals diff. So we're going to add that to main. Game over equals scene that game over scene manager we're going to go to game no scenes for the game 
when we update if self.game.lost self dot scene manager dot activate scene game over and data equals score score equals self dot score level equals self dot level and difficulty equals self dot difficulty. Alright, let's see uh, let's see if this works. We're gonna let the ball go. Oh wait, we we made a bug guys. UI group is not defined. Oh god. I'm going to select a level, and do level the third, start game. And we're going to avoid getting this, and we're going to come down here. Something broke again. What do you guys think broke? Int object has no attribute text. Oh, gotcha. There we go. Have a good night, Sammy. Thanks for hanging out. Game over. Hit escape to return to menu. Score two. Level tutorial. Difficulty hard? Difficulty should have been easy. Does it start on zero difficulty? Easy, medium, hard. One should be easy. Oh. Ha! Ah. There we go. So we have scores now, basically. And that should be the end of what, what we're doing, more or less. Score 2, difficulty easy, level tutorial, score. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. That's, that's working. Like, I mean, I, I want to move this down a little bit. But this is like 75 or something. And make this like, change the color on this to make it like uh, green or something. We're just going to, again, let it die. There we go. And actually, when we go to the game here real quick, before we do anything, you have to remember that we are rendering the collision rectangle, which we don't need to do. So that's, that's it right there. The game basically plays. There is no high score yet, so I'm going to go to the scene. And I can do that as a code task for people if they want to. Code task, add high scores. Tip. Use the game over screen to record score level difficulty. And then show it scrolling. All right, and that, guys, is our breakout game, more or less. It's not complete in the sense that you know everything on it is working perfectly. Uh, okay, I gotta close all these windows. Okay, it's complete in the sense that it is a working game, and we have accomplished what we want to do, which is having a good scene structure and a decent game structure, and you can complete the game. Oh wait, we need to change something else. We need to change something else. Before, before we end, come into the game, 
The game when the game is updating here for i in self dot blocks have visible equals false. If i dot visible or wait. If i dot dead, if not i dot dead. If not not i dot dead have visible equals true and break. If not have visible self dot lost equals true. Code task create a separate Game over screen for victory or victory or loss. There you go, guys. Now, once you clear out all of the blocks, it's going to say game dot loss. That's just basically game over. Um, you can change that to have a win and a lose, and then add a um, add a. Um, Add a separate scene for when uh, the game is um, a victory or a loss, more or less. And that's going to take a while for me to clear out all of these blocks, but unless it for some reason can get up on that side and just start bouncing around. There we go, that's a better. I just want to confirm that it actually ends the game when you when you uh, kill everything. Actually, it should perfectly fine. But we'll end it here. Uh, while this is going, uh, if anyone has any questions, feel free and ask now, and uh, we'll try and go over them really quick before we end the video. My imported modules um, in, uh, yeah, I'll go over everything here. Um, once we end this here, I can, I can show you again the structure of everything that we ended on. Uh, the modules that we're using, uh, the only external module that doesn't come with Python is Pygame. Otherwise, we do use glob. Uh, NT path and OS and random. I think they're the only ones, but I will go over it quick to confirm that with you. Any other questions? Oh man! Oh, <laughs> well then, I apparently suck at this game. So for breakout, it is a bit uh, slow, but again, that's mainly because of how I defined the level. If I were playing the other levels, they'd probably be done sooner, or if I had had, you know, the line of explosives that we were originally thinking about having that we don't have yet. <laughs> Chris.
Crap, man. This, this is a bit... Yes. Except for Pygain, everything we use comes default... Uh, uh, installed default with Python, yes. Okay, now... Oh my god. This is a bit of a problem. <laughs> Hold on, let, let's see if we can do this. No, that didn't actually speed it up. So it's like bouncing right around everything. Um. <laughs> That's actually a bit of a problem. Let's let it, there we go. Let's let it speed up a bit. There we go. Uh, gonna hit. There we go. That fixed it a bit. It's just like bouncing in circles, like, uh-oh. That's maybe not laid out the way we want it to be laid out. <laughs> Need cheat? You can feel free. I, this video will be up on YouTube. Um, so if you want to add cheats, go for it. Like, go for it. Come on! Oh, come on! Kill these! Oh my god, did you see that? It just like barely missed. That's not gonna hit. Oh my god, it's gonna take forever to kill the last couple here. <sighs> gonna hit? No, it's not gonna hit! No. <laughs> Is it gonna hit? No! <laughs> um, that's gonna hit. There we go. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Eh, eh, yep! Oh no! Oh, but one! Oh my god. Come on! Come on! Well, that was effective. They're gonna hit? No, not quite. Almost. Yes, 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 yes. No! <laughs> so this is one of the things that you'll find with a lot of games, is even though programmatically they make sense, you'll end up with something... There we go. And it did go to game over, so that's exactly what we wanted to have happen. And, yeah. All right, so... Quickly looking at it, rungame.py is our game. So we have from library import main, main.run. Okay, so library is our module that we created. Inside game, we're importing the OS, and we're importing the random modules. Both of those come with Python. OS allows you to interact with the file system primarily, though it does some other stuff as well. We're only using it for the file system. And then random lets us get random numbers, uh, so we can make the colors all neat and vibrant uh, for the blocks. And the GUI is just importing the locals from Pygame, so that when it... Um, and it's, it's importing Pygame and the locals, that way it can handle the events properly. The main is simply importing the scene graph and importing Pygame. And that's all it's doing, it's just basically running the scene and setting everything up, that's all it's doing. And then in the scene, we're importing our GUI that we created, we're importing our game module we created, and then we're importing the OS, again for the files, glob and nt path. All three of these we're using for files and the reason we have those is to list all of the levels we have in the data slash levels directory and then it is parsing those out uh, for selection when we go to the level select scene right here it's grabbing all of the dot text in the glob it's grabbing just the file name and then it's grabbing just the name before the text and then it's creating a GUI element for each of those level names, and it is allowing us to select through them and loop through them. All right, so I'm going to end the programming part of the stream now. Um, thank you all for watching. This will again, it'll be up on YouTube, 
it will be linked from my website. There will be a forum post on my website. So if you take this and expand upon it and improve it, or maybe you add some levels, or maybe sound effects, or images, or maybe you go in and you add the bomb blocks, or you know whatever it is you can think of doing, let me know. You know, post it on the YouTube video, uh, message me on Twitch, or you can post it on my forums. That'd be preferable. If you would, you can see the link at the bottom of the video down there, ajaxvm.com slash forum. Um, uh, there will be a thread. There's going to be a community specifically for this once we get people doing the demo more often and actually taking it and working it on, on it on their own. But uh, wherever you want to do it, go for it. And um, thank you guys for tuning in. I'm going to stop the video now.